Good afternoon, this is Simon Browning from See Through Web, and in this continuing series of Typo3 demonstration videos, we're looking at Temple of Voila and how we can use it to map designs in Typo3. On the screen here, we have the site we're working on, the Red Tie demonstration. It's an HTML and CSS design that we've mapped into Typo3. We have created a main content area, a left content area. The menus are dynamically generated from the pages in the tree. Um, and what we're going to look at in this video is creating a flexible content element. It's called a flexible content element. So we have basically a single page template that has the left column and the main uh, wider content area. If we wanted to create uh, two column text down here, well, we could throw a table into a main content area. Uh, not too, not particularly uh, useful or advisable. Uh, but what we can also do is we can create sort of subdivided content elements to make it uh, easier for our client administrators and editors. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I have created an HTML template which has basically a, a surrounding div and inside it two divs that are 50% the width in, the, in our style sheet. You can see that I've made this class uh, float left and be 50% wide. I actually made it 49% wide just to be safe and then I'll, I'll tweak the settings later as I need to. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to bring this into the system. So I'm going to go to Temple of Voila and I actually I don't want to go to Temple of Law. I want to go to File List, just where I was actually, and I am going to click on the icon of that 5050 element. There it is, and I'm going to select Temple of Law. Uh, I do that, and uh, now it's remembered some stuff that I was doing before. I'm not sure what's there, so I'm just going to click Clear All because I want to start fresh. And so starting fresh, uh, it asks us where the root of this element is. So I'm going to map the root to my surrounding div. And I'm just going to click on it. And then I'm going to set. And I need to now make a new one called uh, left call, for instance. And click add. And we're going to call it left column. And I'm going to skip the mapping instructions and sample data. I don't actually need to fill those out. Uh, under what type of element is, I want it to be an element for page content elements, meaning that the user can select whether it's going to have text or images or a news module or whatever they want in there. So I set that. I'm going to map it now to the first of my two 50-50 elements. And I'm going to set that. And I'm going to uh, now close this. And I'm going to create one more for the right side, right call. I'm going to hit add. And I'm going to call this right column. And it's also going to be for page content elements. And I'm going to add, I'm going to map to the second one. And we're going to set and now we're going to save as and now we're saving as not a page template this time but a content element and we're going to call it two column content element how about that and we're going to create the ds and to and now let's clear our cache for fun because i like to clear my cache i'm going to switch to page view i am going to look at my home page and I'm going to create a new content element in here and if I scroll down I should have a new section called content elements two column content element, the one we just created it's got a default thumb, uh, thumbnail here we can create a thumbnail for that we'll do that later so let's click on this I'm going to wait for a second and I'm not going to do anything else at this point except save and close now, once I've done that, you can see we now have this two-column content element, and I can create something in here. Let's create a regular text element. Left side. Copy. Let's save and close that. And let's just copy and paste this to the other side. And let's look at my front end and refresh. And there we go, left side. And now we need to do some CSS work, but there you go.